And I think people will keep coming in as we're going. And so today we have uh, Jenny Rhodes with us. She's the Queen Anne's um, agent, ag agent. And she's gonna talk to us about getting started with QuickBooks. I think it sounds like it's a pretty um, hot topic right now. And most of us don't have a ton going on. So it's probably the best time that we can start you know, getting our businesses in QuickBooks and managing our finances properly. So if Jenny, you wanna take it away. Okay, I will get started. Thanks, Erica. Thanks for um, putting this uh, together. Like Erica said, I'm the um, county ag agent in Queen Anne's County, and I'm also a poultry and uh, grain farmer. So I have uh, used QuickBooks uh, every day, and it really helps me in my operation. And uh, this is a very basic, uh, know how to get started with QuickBooks so we will just um, go ahead and, and get started let's see if I can uh, well okay so um, do a little introduction here talking a little bit about you know why QuickBooks we really need especially well anytime but especially you know now that of what's going on in our country and on our farms I think there's nobody that has gone untouched um, with uh, you know global um, pandemic of COVID nineteen, but you know more than ever, you know being a good manager and good production is certainly um, very important. And figure out, figuring out what our farm profitability is for ourselves, for our bankers, you know, for our accountant, you know that list um, certainly does go on and on. So what are the things, you know, some of the things that we need to think about? You know, we want to always plan for profit, and certainly our job as county ag agents uh, is to help farmers um, with profitability. And we think this is a good, really good tool, um, you know, for use. Uh, with QuickBooks, you know, you can get monthly profit and loss statements, um, compare year to year. I love the comparing from year to year. I can go back, start my farm um, in 87. I can go clear back on QuickBooks and I can compare every single year to see, you know, what's changed. Um, it just is so easy. We can manage, you know, a lot of different things. We can break uh, things down uh, into QuickBooks. If any, but you know, for you know, grain farm, you can break it down into, you know, income from corn, income from wheat, income from soybeans. I mean, and expenses the same way. So you can get as technical as you want, but then you can be as general um, as you want. It also um, helps with budgets, and the financial statements are um, are really good on this. So you know, when I get done at the end of the year, every year. You know, I can um, print out my financial statements, send them to my banker, you know, send them to my accountant and makes things uh, much easier. And it really does make communication with our lenders, our investors, our spouses or our partner um, much easier. And one thing I do want to point out to, you know, on the farm side, our household um, sometimes is so integrated depending on how we have things set up. It's very important especially in these times that we know what our household budget is. If we're, you know, going to the bank and we're having trouble, you know, making payments, they're going to say, well, what's your household budget? Well, they may just have a figure that they use, but maybe you're, you know, you don't spend a lot of money in your household budget. So I think that's a really important, um, of something that we really need to work on. You know, we need to manage cash. We need to know um, for those that may have, um, you know, accounts receivable, we really need to know how much um, we owe, accounts payable, and accounts, um, you know, figure out for the whole year, you know, what, what kind of income do I need, when my payments are due. I mean, QuickBooks can help you certainly um, with all these. QuickBooks also has a payroll uh, feature. I do not um, use that, but the people that do uh, really do uh, like QuickBooks like that part about uh, about QuickBooks. Record keeping, we just can't talk enough about how important record keeping is. We all like to go outside and we all like to work on the farm, but there's not uh, many of us that like to sit at our desk and, and do the record keeping, but record keeping is just really so important um, for all aspects of, you know, the proof to the IRS of things we have to do, um, decision aids when we need to make decisions on making purchases of maybe farms or enterprises or even, you know, changing enterprises, knowing what, if we're diversified, you know, what enterprise is making us money or maybe even just what farm is making us, us money. So we can delve down um, into QuickBooks and institutional, um, you know, requirements from our lending agencies, farm service agency, crop insurance, you know, really get getting down. And then same thing with uh, 
nutrient management. We all know that, you know, if you're in Maryland, you have to fill out an annual implementation report. We can have all that um, in, inputted into, um, into QuickBooks and certainly, you know, get those numbers um, pretty, pretty fast. Again, you know, decision-making tool is very important. Maybe we need to hire workers or, you know, what are land rental um, rates? You know, am I paying too much for one farm and, and not another? Like I said, adding and removing is very important. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, QuickBooks Pro 2020. Uh, you have to decide what works for your operation. If you need payroll, you would certainly want to uh, include that, and that's that's an additional charge. Usually you can find QuickBooks, this on sale, $150, um, maybe a little bit more, but certainly look, um, you know, look for that. Um, you can find it pretty much um, anywhere. So I'm just going to go through, um, I did a, a lot of screenshots. I thought maybe that was easier. I've got QuickBooks loaded to at the end. If anybody has any questions, we can go back. But um, you can buy QuickBooks, uh, the one I showed you, that has the CD. You know, so I have the CD you can drive. You can. Um, also uh, purchase the online version, but I really liked having that CD. If something happens to my uh, computer or something may crash, um, I have that CD that I, that I can reload and I can't, we're gonna talk a lot about backing up. You only need to lose your data one time and I'll tell you what, that um, really teaches you. So I back up, maybe not every time that I'm on, but every other time at least. Um, someone told me once, you know, um, back up as often as you like, but think about if you don't back up, you're going to have to go back and put all that in. So once you insert the CD into the CD drive, this is what's going to come up. I put some red arrows on here and you're just going to really click on it. It's going to, it's going to say set up EXE and that's execution file. So you're going to click on that. And once you um, click on that, you're going to get a screen that says welcome to QuickBooks. And of course you have to go through and you have to read about, you know, the installation and, you know, view, you can view the license agreement, go through and read, read all that. And then, of course, you always have to accept and continue and uh, move uh, right through uh, QuickBooks. There is a uh, product and license number that you do have to um, include. I think I have that on the next, yeah. So on the next um, here, this was the license number off mine. So you have to scratch that. I think I have a picture, let's see. No, maybe I didn't. But there's a, a number on the back um, of the box and you have to scratch that off with a penny or whatever and then you put this license number in. And when you get done, this is going to register your product online. So important to keep these numbers because if you have need QuickBooks help, they're gonna ask you what your license number is. So it's important to print this off and put this somewhere so that you will, um, you will know where it is. You can always, um, I don't know, um, at the bottom here, you says, help me find the numbers. As you go through QuickBooks, you always see this in blue and there's this little question mark in a bubble. Click on those, Any, all of those will help you. They have done a great job of making it much easier um, to install um, QuickBooks. So usually, um, you know, you can choose the installation type. There's Express, that's uh, recommended. I usually do um, what's recommended, but again, you see the little blue question mark down there, so you can click on that and then you can decide uh, what might work uh, for your um, computer. One thing I will say too um, about QuickBooks is to check with your accountant, see um, my accountant, uses QuickBooks, and I think most of them do, uh, and they usually have a QuickBooks Pro um, on staff um, that will help you, and certainly I am, I'm here to help um, also. This is, again, this is just a um, explanation. I clicked on um, explain my choices, and this was the screen that popped up. So it, it actually tells you, you know, how to choose, when do you choose the Express um, setup, or when do you choose the, the custom um, set up. So very important. And if you're updating, if you already have a QuickBooks program and you're updating, it's important to know um, certainly which one of those um, that you need to use. But like I said, it's very um, friendly. So here's where I um, put all this in and this, this pops up and then it's ready to install and this prints up and you can see um, up in the um, right hand uh, corner there, print this page. So print that page out, put that somewhere so that you know and you can see from my screen, I had 
QuickBooks Pro 2015 on my computer. So it actually um, updated from that. So from here, you just hit install and then it starts, um, it really starts the um, installation. <clears throat> um, you'll see across the bottom, it will, um, it's uninstalling QuickBooks um, 2015 and then it'll install the new one, but it does not um, get rid of your old information. And if you have a lot of data, it takes a long time to do this. I um, recently installed on my farm computer, uh, actually it was last year and I was having a heart attack because like it's almost everything like disappeared for like three minutes, but because I had such a large file, so don't be upset. If it does take, if you have a lot of information, it may take um, a few minutes to uninstall and then um, bring all your, your data um, back together. Um, again, so you can see at the bottom here now was the second screen. This is where it was, it was installing, you know, the 2020, um, the new version. Jenny, real quick, um, we do have some questions in the chat. Do you want to address them now or wait? Um, no, we can. Can you, okay. uh, let me see, can I there's, see the top you want to read them to me? Yeah, there's, there's three different ones here. The first, okay. one, you might get to these later, but the first one is, uh, how do we pay ourselves without paying payroll taxes? Uh, okay. And this individual has an LLC. Okay. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit. I'll write these okay. down. And we okay. Talk yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the second one is liability insurance is an expense, but also a current asset question mark liability what liability insurance oh insurance okay so i guess what is it classified as okay. your books okay and um we don't have a cpa yet do you have any recommendation for small farms okay the well um the well, I might as well just address them now. So the, the payroll um, taxes, if you're an LLC, the best thing for you to do is talk with your accountant and decide how that should be set up. Because everybody's um, business, you know, is a little bit different. Some may tell you to take draws, um, you know, so that's something you'll want to work out. Liability insurance is usually an expense. Um, I don't know when it would be um, an asset, but that would be under your expenses. And the last one was, oh, recommendations for um, a CPA. Um, as extension, we don't endorse uh, anyone, but I do tell people to reach out to any of your friends uh, that have small farms and, and maybe see uh, who they use. You could reach out maybe to your Farm Bureau. Um, you know, they may have uh, some suggestions. I do suggest that you know, if you find a CPA that is um, well versed in in farming because it is, you know, it's it's different from certainly other um, enterprises. I think that is very important. All right, we good, Andy, for now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. All right. Keep them. Keep them coming. <laughs> All right. So once you uh, click on the installation, you'll get this installation. Um, is complete and then you're gonna want to open up your QuickBooks. Now I'm going to tell you that QuickBooks or Intuit, it's called Intuit QuickBooks, they like to sell you uh, a lot of things um, and you'll get a lot of pop-up screens. So if you get these pop-up screens you can um, you can pretty much just um, ignore uh, those pop-up screens because there are like they'll that you can buy QuickBooks um, checks but I can tell you, you can go out on, you know, the internet and search and buy, you know, really pretty much check, checks a lot cheaper um, out on different websites. And, you know, you put in your bank routing number and your account number and they all, they all do uh, a pretty good, pretty good job. So, um, so now we are ready to, there's a red arrow, so we just want to begin the activation. So we have got everything installed. I have to tell you, it's much easier than it used to be. QuickBooks has done a really good job of um, beginning um, activation. Uh, again, this is, you know, if you had a question, um, these are just, I kind of just did a screenshot of this about, you know, how to um, learn more. So you can, if I clicked on that learn more on this, um, page back here where this, see, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but where this said learn more up here, if you clicked on that, this is what you, you got. And, um, but you can kind of go down there and um, 
read and, and educate yourself as things go on. So you need to sign in. And again, this is how you um, sign into um, into it and create uh, a password if you need, ever need to uh, to get to get back into it. Um, and then this is, this is just some more you have to enter. They, you have to um, put in your email and then they send you a four digit code and you can, or you can put in your, um, your phone number and they'll send you a four digit code. So it is, they do work um, to be, um, certainly to be um, very, um, very secure on different things. So this is just talks about, you know, how does it um, connect to the internet? Once you get up and going and you turn, um, you know, if you click on the icon for QuickBooks, a lot of times they'll ask you, do you want to update uh, your computer? Because they will keep, just like your Windows and other things we have on, it will update uh, for you, which is really important that you do keep, um, keep up to date with all the, all the QuickBooks. Um, so this is, just, this is just me. So this is my, um, my university um, account. So again, it just comes up and gives you, you know, your account number. So another thing you you know you'd want to print off and, and keep somewhere. Very important. Then here's all the details. You know, so this is my account number. Here's my product number, license number, um, my contact, um, which which is very important. Sorry about that. Um, so another thing just to keep. You know, so it just says your QuickBooks activation is is now complete. So we, so as we get into it, so here's where, you know, everybody gets kind of nervous and they're like, oh my gosh, where do I go from here? So just, you just follow step by step exactly um, what QuickBooks um, is telling you to. So if you're getting in for the first time, I've got a red arrow here. So you're going to create uh, a, a new company. Okay. And then as you um, create this new company, so it tells you, you know, let's get started. You know, um, who are you recruiting? Um, creating this file for for yourself um, or for someone else most of the time you're doing it for yourself and then you just go over and you'll click um, start uh, the setup and then as you so you just it's got red stars so everything that starred has to be um, you know has to be in when you get started I think the most important um, part here is the more information you can put in, especially in the beginning, um, you know, is very important. So if this is, um, you know, um, if you're a sole proprietor, you know, this would be, you know, your name. If you're an LLC, you would put your LLC name here. If you're S Corp, whatever that is, it's very important to do that. And then as you go down, um, let's see, I think I've got, okay. So um, on the second line, so after you get your business name in, okay, so industry, so help me choose. I'm gonna go down to the next slide. When you click on this button, it's gonna help me choose, and this is what QuickBooks has done. So you go down, they have now um, an account for agriculture, farming, and ranching, and when you do that, you can see over to the, um, to the right side, these are the list of accounts they're gonna download, and a lot of these accounts will really match your Schedule F. Now you can go back in and you know adjust these, or maybe some you do or don't use, but it gives you um, a really, really good start and makes it really does make life uh, much, much easier. So once you um, once you start that, then it's going to ask you, um, you know, are you a sole proprietor? Are you a partnership? Are you an LLC? Um, very important that you know, you know you know what that is. Talk with your accountant. You know if. Um, you may have, you know, several LLCs, you know, but just talk with your accountant so you know exactly what you're doing when you set, when you um, set these up, because you want to set them up in the correct way. This is kind of the most important. So you can see, I think I just made this my farm name is Jenny's Farm. So I'm agriculture, ranching, and farming. I clicked on that. I'm a sole proprietor. Proprietor. I put in my admin email. So that's the email that you put in when you registered. Make sure your employer identification matches, you know, whether it's your social security number or whatever you um, decide to put in there, your phone number, your business address. And um, then you just click down at the bottom where it says um, create your company and you are, um, you're ready to go. So again, um, you know, this just tells you about, you know, what kind of quick, what QuickBook does. It says you're all set, you're ready to go. 
Um, you know, you can pay employees, you can, um, well, it says file taxes easier, but it does, you know, for your accountant. Um, the most important thing is printing checks. If you're going to uh, take the time to do QuickBooks, make sure that you um, also take the time to learn how to print checks. I've had people that do QuickBooks and they write checks by hand. I don't quite understand that because that's a lot of work. Um, but it, you know, everything just depends on, um, you know, on what you want. Now here's, this is just, um, there's a tour, a tour that will come up when you first um, start. I would say take those times and look at the, you know, look for those. If you're not doing, you know, customer POs or invoice emails, then don't look at that part. But, you know, go down and kind of look at the things you can see over on the left. There's invoicing, here's reports, product um, help. Um, file management. So you can go and take your time and look through all these because I think they will help you to understand um, QuickBooks um, a little better. But like I said, so the next thing um, you're going to do is you're going to put in your, your bank information. Um, very important when you get started. So depending when your business year starts, so was, if it's January 1st or July 1st or September 1st, I think a lot of times it's always easier um, to start uh, at that time and make sure you've got a really good opening balance and so make sure you have uh, reconciled your account and you know exactly what that opening balance is because that's part of what you're going to have to put in. And I think I've got, yeah. So let me go back here. So when you get down to this, uh, when you click on this where it says enter opening balance, you're going to get this screen. So, you know, whether I, like I said, whether it's January 1st, July 1st, whatever it is, you're going to put in your um, statement, opening um, balance, and your date. Can't, I can't say, stress enough how important that is to have that good balance. Um, so you make sure that you've reconciled your accounts and you know exactly what your um, balance is. So this is what I just put in. I put in, you know, my statement date was 25,000 and I'm gonna start um, at the beginning of the year. And then you just um, click okay. Now down here at the, um, where I have this red arrow, this is um, a tax line mapping. So if you want to assign um, kind of your accounts to a, a tax line, I didn't do this at first because I thought it was just um, too overwhelming uh, for me. But a lot of times accountants uh, will help you um, go in and set those up. Um, just more, I'd say more for your accountants um, as you go, but you can see there's a, there's kind of a explanation too. Again, there's the blue. Um, how do I choose, you know, the right um, tax line for this? So that's something that, you know, you can look at, but I wouldn't get all hung up on that. Most important is kind of just really getting started. Um, get your account and get your account balance in there and, and get, get going. Once you uh, get started, this is gonna be, um, this will be your home screen. So you can see you're gonna have um, down the side, you're gonna have things across the top, and then you kind of got this working, uh, working map uh, here in the middle. So it just kind of depends on what you like, I like to work uh, with these icons um, on the screen. So you'll see up top, this is vendors. Um, and then down here are more customers. So depending on what your um, you know, business is, if you, have, if you have payroll, this is gonna be the bottom part. And then your company, really the most that I use on my farm is these over here, it's your company. So you've got your chart of accounts, um, you've got items and services, you've got a calendar. Well, again, so you can order checks from them, but you don't need to do that. And then down here in the banking, this is, you know, this is where you can record deposits, you can reconcile, you can write checks. There's your check register, you know, so for people like, oh, I'm scared, I, I'm just gonna lose my check register, but you've got a check register right on here. And I know a lot of people, when they first start, you know, they print that out. And if that's easier for you, you know, by all means, you know, go ahead and, you know, print that out and make it much easier. Same with your chart of accounts. If you want to print that out as you start, it makes things uh, much easier. But when you, when you get over here, so everything you can kind of, like three, three ways. You can hear, you can go down on the left side, or you can go um, certainly across the top. And as you go across the top, you know, this, you'll have a lot of the same, the same information here. 
Um, but just once you in install it, you kind of got to click on a lot of these things and just kind of um, figure out, um, you know, kind of like, you know, where you like to do, go and, and what you do. Oh, the other thing I forgot was reconciliation. Um, very important to reconcile uh, every month and QuickBooks makes reconciliation um, really, really easy. So make sure that you, um, you do uh, use, use that feature. So again, these are just, I, you know, kind of print these off. Here's, you know, you can record deposits. Um, if I was, and then again, here's the top part. The, this is your chart of accounts. So these would be all your accounts, all your income, um, your expenses, um, your assets. You can even um, take time and put, you know, put all your assets in here. So if you did a balance sheet um, for your uh, accountant or for your banker, that's done. But that all takes time. So don't get, get overwhelmed thinking you have to enter everything at one time. Just get the basics in and um, and start. I think it makes um, things much easier. So here's your vendor. Again, here's your vendor, vendor screen. Now here's, um, so if you clicked on, you know, how to make deposits, here's your screen that would come up. Um, pretty easy. You can see Shore United Bank. That's the bank that I that I set up a deposit, and then we're just gonna start moving, um, you know, from uh, left to right and um, entering the information in, uh, I think if I go to the next screen, I think, yeah. So on the next screen, I showed, you know, how to um, make a deposit. So if I was getting, uh, if I say I had a check from Nagel Farm Service, I would um, enter them uh, in. And as I put them in, if they're not there, there'll be a drop down screen that, that that comes up and then you'll enter them and then they'll they'll become um, one of your um, vendors. And then account crop sales would be um, the account that that's gonna um, go to. You can you can put the check number in, you can get, you can put in, a, if they pay you when probably by cash, but it would be um, more probably by check and then also, and then the amount. And then once you, Get all that information, you go to the bottom, you can hit save and new or save and close. So save and close would take you um, out and back to the main screen or save and new if you had another um, deposit um, to enter. The same way um, with writing a check, you could click on write to check um, icon and you see all the, um, again, it's a short nine at your bank. This is my beginning balance, $25,000. And um, when I hit this, I, up in the top ribbon, you can see where I have print late, later. So you click on that and that tells the computer, I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna print um, that check later. And then I'll show you um, how you fill that out. So as you go, um, put the date in, you can enter um, Delmarva Power, um, you can put the amount. And then again, when you get down to the bottom to the account, this, is, this expense account, it will actually, um, you already have an account set up for utilities because when you click that you were ag business, it automatically preloaded that. I got any questions out there, Andy? I think we're good. Yeah, we don't have any right now. Okay. All right. So this is the chart of the accounts, like what I was talking about. So this is the chart of accounts that was um, downloaded um, from the, um, agriculture, farming, and ranching um, icon. And we can go in and change these, but it really gives you a great start. And this kind of matches um, the Schedule F, but certainly we can expand on these um, if we need to, but it, it gives us a good start. So you can see this is where, you know, I picked up the utilities and you can print this um, chart of account off that helps you as you start, um, you know, figuring out where things go and, and um, where to put things in what accounts. But you can see at the top of this, we've got some income. So we have what, four income accounts set up. We have one for cooperative distributions, crop insurance proceeds, um, sales, crop sales, and there's another one here for fuel tax credits and others. But um, that's just very basic. And like I said, you can go in and certainly um, change those. This is our check register. So um, like I said, as you make check, as you make deposits, um, as you write checks, this is all going to show up on your on your check register, and um, you can go back at any time and look at, at the, these things. You can click on items. You can go back and 
and edit them. Um, you can record from here. I like to write the checks. When I record my checks or write checks, I like to write on the check, but you can do it from this. It just depends on, you know, depends on what you like, I think. <laughs> um, so here's um, a copy of the check register. So this was after, so you can see my $25,000, my beginning balance. You can see that I made a deposit on 427. Um, it was crop sales and it was in the amount of 13,526.13. And then I wrote a check um, on 427 to Delmarva Power for $2,000. Now, and you can see in the number, it says to print. I haven't actually printed that um, check yet. Um, so I know that I've got to go back and, and print that check or maybe I messed up and you know, but you can always go back and, and fix um, anything. So don't worry about anything that you do. Everything can always, always be fixed. Um, Honey, I have two questions. Okay, go ahead. Um, the first one is, will Quicken convert to QuickBooks? Mm. You know what? I am not, I am not sure. I would kind of doubt it. But I'd have to, I have to read up on that to see. I'm sure you could probably do a search to see. Okay. And the second one is, what should you do if you have multiple sources of income? For example, farming plus property rental. Do you create two separate businesses? What if the money all flow through one bank account? If the money, the nice thing about QuickBooks is you can break, um, you can break things out. So you would set up an account for, um, you know, like you had sales of crops of income and then you could set up another um, income account for rental. So you can certainly break those things out. So it does, QuickBooks does make it um, much easier, especially um, if you're a sole proprietor for years, I ran one QuickBooks um, account and I had my, personal stuff and I had my farm um, things before I set up an LLC and I could break those apart so my accountant could see you know what was farm and you know what was not so it really depends on how you're set up when you set up now I have an LLC so I have, I have to have two I have two sets of books um, but I really keep my personal things personal and my LLC separate so that's one thing you're going to have to talk with your accountant to see um, what will work Good. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, so from here, this is where um, you would go um, to print checks. And if there was something to print and think if I did the next one, Let's see. no, I didn't. Um, if I went to print checks, there would be a, um, they would be listed here. If I had to print checks, you hit okay. And then you'll have to line your checks. But like I said, it's, it's very self, um, self-explanatory. QuickBooks, like I said, has lots of reports. You can um, memorize reports. You can use their custom um, reports, but you can go in and um, you know do things that you may want to see all the time. You can do uh, profit and loss, you know, from a month. You can do profit and loss for a year. You can do profit and loss for last quarter. A lot of different things. So you can kind of see down this left hand side. Um, all these different reports um, that you can go um, go in and and print. I think it's um, so you just got to kind of go in and play with it and and kind of look. I do want to show you this. There is a when you go back um, to open a sample file. Sometimes we're afraid to do things on our account, so you can go back in and look at this sample file. They they don't have a farming. Um, account in, but they do have um, this one is called I think it's Rock Creek. I can't I can't see the top. I lost. Um, anyway, there's a um, sample in here, so you can go in and kind of play around to see what is what is um, how they've set up their account, and you can enter transactions in, and it doesn't doesn't really hurt um, anything, and you can see. Certainly on this screen, this, um, I think it's called Rock Creek. Uh, they do payroll. They have a lot of different things, as you can see, um, on their home screen. So it's a good, really a good tool to, to go in and, um, and just play around with and, and, look, and look at. Um, QuickBooks has a great help. They do, they, not, they also have, well, they have Ask the Expert. They have an online chat. 
Um, if you call the 800 number, you know, you'll have to give, again, your product number, I think is, is, um, is really very important. Um, talk to your accountant also about, you know, how to set up one of the things you'll need to know is, you know, are you on a cash um, method or cruel? Most of us are on a cash method, but just make sure that you know that um, when you do, um, when you do set up um, QuickBooks. Some of the other things you might want to look at, this is a the farmer's guide um, to taxing it, on taxes, farmer's guide to tax. It's a 90 page if you ever get bored and it's a lot of information, but it'll also um, help you set up. And the schedule F, here's a link also to <laughs> the schedule F. Um, so as you do set up your accounts um, as for ease of when you do your um, tax reporting um, to your accountant, some accountants uh, will want you just to print things off and bring to them. Other ones uh, may want you to, um, you know, put things on a USB, uh, bring that information to them. You can even email um, your information to them. So a lot of that just depends on, um, you know, on your accountant and what they do. So advantages um, of QuickBooks, um, it's really, you know, really easy to use. Um, it writes your checks. You can even put your um, signature in there too, if, if you want to, most people don't, but it can manage your accounts payable, accounts receivable. It can do online banking. I have never hooked um, my two together just because when I write checks, I want them to go in. I don't wanna have to go wait to go back to my bank and then download um, those checks. Now I do, you know, occasionally if I am going somewhere and I need to write a check, I can write a computer check and then I can come back and put that check in. It does make it, um, it is very flexible on those kind of things. Or if, you know, if you've gone to the ATM and you've taken some cash out or um, if I use it at, um, you know, at the hardware store and I use my debit card, then I, you know, I can, I can come home and, and add those um, into QuickBooks. They do have those, um, those features. Has payroll. Um, easy to reconcile. It's really easy to um, produce uh, reports, <laughs> the enterprise accounting, and list of assets. So as you get, as you put things in, um, you can start adding uh, into your um, list of assets. You can, you know, enter, you know, your farm, your vehicles. That all takes time. I would just first start really just working on, um, you know, writing checks getting your vendors in, I think that is um, most important. Just put those vendors in as you write a check or you make a deposit. Um, it can create uh, invoices. I don't do that on mine, but it, can, it has lots of, um, lots of flexibility. It can do lots of different things. Uh, maintain a list of customers and vendors. I mean, when you go in to set those, your customers and vendors, you can put email addresses, a lot of different. Um, we talked about whether cash or cruel accounting can manage um, your lines of credit, um, credit cards, uh, QuickBooks is even set up um, depending, you know, if you're a retail, um, they can even um, manage credit cards um, also. But QuickBooks has a lot of features and I can't even hardly begin to, you know, to know all of them. Uh, um, so just an overview, um, we've talked a little bit about chart of accounts. We didn't um, talk about items or classes, but like I talked about the question um, about if you have two sources of income, so that kind of that itemizes those income. So you can have it, you know, income for farm, whatever, you know, farm um, sales, and then for rental, you know, income for, uh, not sales, rental income, and um, maybe income from uh, grain. And then deposit information, um, receiving and tracking, um, paying bills, reconciling, payroll, and then again, just the whole um, accounting. Jenny, um, I have three questions. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh oh, I just moved. One says, do you need to use journal entries for anything? You can, you can, there is a feature on there that you can um, enter things in journal entries. So you can use, do some journal entering into um, QuickBooks. Okay. Um, the next one says, does QuickBooks Online have agriculture, farming, and ranching options? I believe the QuickBooks Online um, does. 
I've kind of um, steered away from it. I have, I know of um, a couple farmers that have it. You have to pay a um, monthly fee to be into that. And I'm afraid that probably they're gonna, QuickBooks is gonna probably move to that. Um, but they didn't, the QuickBooks online doesn't have all the features that the desktop version has. Okay. So just be, so make sure you do your research, you know, if, and maybe, you know, the online version is what, you know, what you want may work. Cause I know a lot of people, the online version, you know, they talk about, you can take a picture of a receipt, you know, put those things in so I can understand certainly why people would want that. Okay. Um, next one is how does QuickBooks interface with online sales platforms like Gray's Cart, um, 10,000 Eco Farms and Cropolis? Yeah, I do not know um, the answer to that question. And that okay. would be a question for um, probably a QuickBook export or maybe even your, um, maybe even your accountant. Okay, and then one more. So, so do you not have to, so do you not have your QuickBooks account linked to your online banking account for automatic downloads of transactions? Yeah, I, I do not. I do not because I, I don't, I want to know what's in my account. When I write a check, I want to know what my, or make a deposit. I want to know. I don't want to have to wait until, until that check um, clears. So I, I just think, I don't know. I don't understand for a business, you know, I think it would be hard to keep books for business if you have to wait um, until that, till that check clears. Okay. That's it for now. Okay. All right, so again, um, tax records, it'll um, also um, do financial ratios for you. You know, when we go to make, um, ask for a loan, um, a lot of our loan officers, well, they do that internally, but, you know, if you want to know certainly what that is, I think it's, um, it's very important. Um, so we've gone through, this is just, you know, like a um, step by step, we've kind of talked, um, you know, about that. Uh, let's see what else in here. Um, reconciling, I can't talk enough about um, reconciling, how important um, that is. We'll also do some uh, physical inventory um, in uh, QuickBooks. So just some tips. Um, talk again with your accountant. Um, they can put your depreciation amounts uh, into your QuickBooks if you want to see, you know, what that's going to be. So you've got a really good picture uh, for the um, end of the year. Also, um, you know, make sure before, whenever your year does end, a month or two before, make sure you're going to your accountant, you know, take your QuickBooks file and, you know, go over your information just to make sure that you have, you know, everything where it's going to be and certainly, you know, what you may need to do to plan um, for, um, you know, the end of the year. There is a, um, in the chart of accounts, there is a, an account called Ask My Accountant. So if you get, you're entering something and you don't know where to put it, you can put it there temporarily and then you can go back, um, you can really go back and, and, and uh, fix that later. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so make sure if you are going to put in um, your fixed assets, make sure you get a current value uh, of what it, you know, might be and then also what your accumulated um, depreciation would be. And then also um, any unpaid payroll withholding, you know, before you enter QuickBooks, before you start QuickBooks, make sure that you've got that. And then also as you put things in a QuickBook, your loans, make sure you have all your balances um, on your, any loans or mortgages you have, because you want, you might, you, you'll want to put those in there. Um, I talked about this, reconciliation, um, printing off your um, chart of accounts, save time, uh, print checks. I think it's really important. So keep calm because you have QuickBooks. It's going to really make you, I think it's going to make you a better manager. It's going to, um, you're going to really understand, you know, where your businesses are, especially if you're, you know, diversified and figuring out, well, let's see, is this is this enterprise making me money or is this farm even making me money? If you have different farms and different crops, you can, you know, break things down, um, you know, even more than that. This is my um, contact information. So um, feel free certainly to, um, you know, contact me with um, any questions that, that you might have. It's, um, it's all, you know, it's always a little, it's easy, but, you know, 
trying to figure out your way around. Once you figure it out, it's not hard, but it's just, it's just getting started and don't be scared of it because you can always undo whatever you do. So I will stop there and see if anybody has any questions. Um, let's see. Anyone have any questions? And you can, um, yep, you can also unmute them yourself as well if you'd like to speak. Let me, uh, let me stop share here. Oh.